Hey, Pronouncers, welcome back to another episode of Printavo Pronouncers Podcast. Very excited about our guest today. We've got Mr. Cal King out of Hercules, California, which you probably haven't heard of that unless you're by there. But Bay Area, close enough, founder of Blue Chip Teas. Thanks for joining us, Cal. Hey, thank you for having us, uh, Bruce. I uh, really appreciate it. Wait, so you're talking about your back? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm a very athletic person, but I uh, jumped on one of those SB bikes, tried to pop some wheelies. I hit about a good 15, 20 feet, but uh, uh, yards. But after that, I was just, oh, oh man, I mean, just sprung the back and tight muscles tighten up against the bones and stuff. So I've been out <laughs> for the last week, just trying to recover. But yeah, you know, today's a good day. Um, we just got back from the chiropractor and, um, you know, they cracked it a little, little bit, you know, second session and um, feeling a little bit better. You know, it's a little bio freeze on the backside and, you know, ready to kind of rock and roll today. So a little catch up. Doctor said uh, no more wheelies for a little bit. No more wheelies at all. Actually, wifey said no more wheelies. So <laughs> <laughs> and I was so intrigued to get a, um, a SB bike, you know, but um now, uh, you know, granted that I have a, a huge job and uh, responsibility to take care of here at the shop, you know, so no more bikes, man. <laughs> Where'd the job come from? Was it just out of the blue or from Yelp or somebody you knew? Um, we're a very strong community base here. Um, another thing, you know, first of all, I would have never got into this business if it wasn't for my background. We used to do a lot of entertainment concerts, shows, clubs here in the Bay Area. So I kind of use that network and rep uh, to build this company, and um, it worked out. It worked out really well over the last 14 years, starting in our garage, and um, and uh, here we are now. And we're just getting jobs pretty much from every direction uh, in our community and area. You know, um, I also did work uh, corporate at one point and um, as an HR staffing uh, manager. And um, that network is uh, streaming in as well. So it's just all about networking, uh, what I found and, um, and using that past to my advantage. How did you how, wait, how did you get into screen printing though? So what, was it from HR and or, or how did that all happen? Well, it was one day um, a buddy of mine came down uh, from Hawaii and he was getting printed t-shirts from another source here in the Bay Area. And I went up to his hotel room and he was like, just go through the boxes, see what you want, you know, size, medium, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I started digging through the sure. boxes and kind of looking at the prints. And then I was like, you know, this light bulb came on into my head, you know. And I was already kind of done with the whole corporate things, wanted to be more close to my girls. And and um, so, you know, over the course of maybe about a year, I was just kind of really studying, going on YouTube and going on different. What forms. year was this? Uh, this was uh, 2007. And um, OK, yeah. And um and then from there, you know, I kind of resigned from my position and really kind of uh, mm -hmm. started looking for these packages. Picked up a um, a, a Riley Hopkins six uh, six color press. Picked up this uh, five thousand uh, dollar package, you know, with a little buddy. And, yeah, yeah. I think we may. I think we may have had the same one. Yeah. <laughs> We had the little buddy. We had the little buddy too. Although uh, ours was from a friend that was in his garage, and he's the one that bought the pack, and so we we bought it off him. Sorry. So so you were watching YouTube. You got into it. It was around oh seven, oh eight. Just starting to print there, or was it printing for yourself, or what? Just printing for myself, trying to figure it out whether or not I was going to, you know, print a bunch of stuff, go to the flea market, sell it um you know uh for friends and uh family um just trying to figure it out and i was in my garage at this time and um you know um one day you know we got an order it was like 250 t-shirts and we just kind of took off from there and i figured out exactly what i wanted to do instead of printing for myself why not just print for everybody else you know, so that sure. was the idea, and um, uh, just kind of just you know hit the ground uh, running from there, and just did it. You know, it was it was a good thing for us, but at the same time, it was a huge. It was a it was just a grind. It was a real grind. So totally, 
Yeah, especially on a manual is definitely. Uh, I mean, anywhere it's a grind. It's just a different types of grind. Um, how, was it just you, or was it you and your wife at the time? Um, she was doing most of the uh, operations, the books. I mean, it was fairly easy because okay. we were operating out of our house. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, it took us another three years to really figure out to if we wanted to go bigger. And um, we did that. And um, since she really got involved as far as ordering the shirts, uh, managing the uh, ledgers, and, um, yeah. you know, and that was very important. You know, if it, without, for, without her, I wouldn't be where I am now. You know, so, yeah. you know, um, uh, uh, everybody, like I said, you know, she came to me one day and she was like, you know, you have boxes everywhere of just T-shirts and you need a she bigger said, space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that was uh, 2011, 2012. We just started looking. What, I, I'm curious, though, how, like you, you talked about when we said, OK, do we want to take this thing to the next level? What does that mean, you know, for somebody that's either getting started or, or maybe at a manual and say, hey, I, I want to take this to the next level. Like what what did that mean for you guys? Well, we knew it was going to be a big risk, you know, um, and transitioning over to a, a automatic was definitely on our minds. But it's like, OK, do we have enough orders to fulfill getting an automatic? Mm-hmm. Um and we just kind of took the risk and um, and uh, transitioned to that. Um, I think we went to New York just to try to figure it out, you know, and just uh, talk about it more. Um, I think I visited a few uh, print shops over in Boston and just see what they were doing. And um, I came back home just kind of with this confidence and really juiced about it. And uh, so I reached out to a few people and, you know, as far as who had automatics here in the bay area and visit just to kind of see what they were doing and started understanding what contract was started understanding what they're doing for their community how they locked that down so i took a look at my community and saw my community was in need of a printer um and we just kind of took that chance and took uh, and dove right into it that's huge i mean that's a pretty big transition for a lot of people on to the first press right um I mean, it's especially as you're also talking about at the same time moving out of your house. Was there anything that you remember that was difficult, maybe that you would have done differently? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, things kind of rolled right into play. Um, one because over the years of being in the garage, I kind of stacked up on different types of equipment. You know, bigger wash booth. Um you know uh tons of screens just kind of prepping myself because in the beginning you know i saw where i wanted to be and executing it was something that i was always you know very mindful of doing so um you know it was i won't say that it was easy but it was just it was it was it was kind of well planned to be honest with you did it fire you? I mean, you talk about being fired up going to see these other shops, which I think is huge. People get so motivated seeing that too. And it's like, holy crap, I can do this exact same thing. You know, do you think it also fired you up to sell a lot more? You know, like sort of feeding the machine in a way because you making that leap up? Um, definitely. Definitely. Reaching out to the people I know, uh, using uh, friends and families as kind of you know, a, uh, a another source of selling. I mean, I always believe in yeah. you, you tell those five people is going to tell another five people. Those five people is going to tell another five people. And, you know, and I, like I said, you know, I use my popularity here in the Bay Area to kind of really gain more business. And it worked. I mean, yes, it was a risk, but it definitely worked for us uh, throughout the years. So, And you've got one auto today? One automatic and uh, one manual press. Got it. And how, like, you talk about your popularity before from working in entertainment. It sounds like a lot of. Um, uh, did you ask for referrals too? When so you know when you say five people can tell five people, like was it, or, or did it more naturally happen, or was it? Hey, can 
is there anybody else you think that you can introduce me to? And it was more naturally, you know, it's like once people went, figured out that hell, Cal's doing printing, and yeah, let's send us some business over to Cal. And once the they saw the prints and saw the, how how good my prints were, um, you know, it, it just kind of piggybacked on from there and there. And um, you know, we just like I said, we got stronger and stronger just by executing good prints um with the manual so sure um you know it's it's interesting how you know now jumping on the automatic versus jumping on the manual and i find myself my prints come out better on the manual <laughs> but as you know i mean everyone mm. knows that when you are on the manual it's not as consistent as the automatic so you know we it, it, I, so now i'm barely using that manual as, as much as i used it in the garage Got it. How, how did your team look um, pre-COVID and now post-COVID in 2021? You know, it's always been my girls, you know, and my uh, wife uh, executing or uh, uh, doing the jobs that, at hand. Got it. So it's just pure family. That's awesome. Just a family. And, um, you know, so it was fairly easy when we got big jobs coming in. Uh, the girls will come over, they'll help. But I mean, for the most, for the most part, it's always been a, just almost a, a, a one man show, to be honest with you. And, you know, we put in hours and hours, 16 hours, 18 hours a day, like just straight print hustling. And, um, um, you know, it, it's a great workout. I can say that for sure. <laughs> I mean, a really sure. great workout. But so, I mean, that's interesting. Um, not that I'm going to say it's a one man show, because obviously you do have the help of the family, but it sounds like you do a lot of work to help carry it. And when the job comes in, you're in there printing it, getting it all done. And then your wife helps make sure that everything's straight. As this quote unquote, like one man show running that auto, it's very interesting. And the way I, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of shop owners who I've talked to who have, you know, grown the team uh and have 20 people or whatever and multiple presses so many say i really miss the days where it was just me or you know me and a partner or me and my wife just working on it back at home or back in the shop but i mean you kind of blended that transition in a way yeah you know um i think when i got when i went into it it was always making the right investments um, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and my wife was always, we have to make the right investments. If you're going to do this as a career, do it for a reason. And so over the years, we have made the right investments as far as getting the equipment, uh, paying the equipment off, uh, transit, uh, the renting the building that, uh, leasing the building that we're in to owning the building that we're in 4,500 square foot warehouse. Mm. So um, it's always been making the right investments and keeping it in the family as much as we can. And I mean, it's just now this last past couple of months where I've gotten two employees to come in really help uh, with this year because we saw last year COVID during COVID, we were busy from May 1st to uh, December 1st. I, we were extremely busy. So I told myself, really, I what, what kind of customers was it like small businesses? Was it large companies, uh, schools, government? Like what kind of stuff were you seeing? We were seeing small businesses and we were also getting out to some of the schools uh, that were doing uh, 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 virtual school uh, classes, but they wanted to have okay. t-shirts while they're, you know, doing this virtual uh, uh, set, uh, sessions. So we did shirts for them. We just kind of sold the business in a different way. And um, Got it. Um, a lot of streetwear, a lot of streetwear guys are coming in. Oh, and, for retail brands you're talking. Right, right. And they're coming in trying to figure out how they're going to, going to keep their money rolling. So we helped them and got them uh, 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 graphics done and whatever that needed to be done and just kind of executed. And, and from there, our next biggest city close to us is Richmond, California. And there are a lot of young people there. And with the one of the great things about here is most of the young people they come and hang out here at the shop, 
you know so it's kind of a little hub to keep kids off the street as well sure. and um and definitely inspire them to see what i'm doing so they go back out and you know transition or uh uh uh, do what they're doing as far as what if it's uh, uh, computer graphics or it's um, uh, video editing and stuff. But they love to come here and just feel the energy to keep them motivated. So that's that's something that I love to do is just see kids motivated and really get them off the streets to do uh, great things in the future. That's awesome. Super admirable. But what what were the, the two people that you brought in? Um Why'd you bring them in and what are they what are they focusing on now day to day? Um I needed someone to do the grunt work. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean when it, when it comes to washing screens, uh prepping, um pulling, uh catching, those things needed to uh, I needed to take that load off and pass the baton because I mean over the years over the last 7 years that we've been here I've been doing pretty much everything, um, you know. Got it. So I mean, it got kind of lonely, bro. So. <laughs> I hear that. What, like, what was that transition? So this was the first time of bringing some outside help. It sounds like uh, to help you. Like, was there a bit of a burnout from COVID? Do you think, or or is it just super busy? What do you think? It was super busy, and yes, there was a big, a huge burnout. I think from like uh, December to the middle of January, I literally took off. You know, um, I mean, I did a few orders here and there, but I mean, I literally took off because I was just so tired, so burnt out. I mean, muscle really? spasms in, in you know in my upper neck. You know, so uh, this year, twenty twenty one, I said things are going to have to change. And um, so we took the steps to make those uh, changes happen by bringing in a few people, uh, someone that's really close to me and, um, we, and sorry about that, someone that's really close to me right. and uh, he's been here at the shop helping periodically, but he had his own thing going, but he decided to come in full time mm -hmm. with us and um, really help us out. Interesting. You know... We don't talk about that kind of, that that side too much. There's a lot of like celebrating successes. Um, was it? Do you feel like? I mean, there was so much going on then, right? I mean, you you know, uh, everything culturally, politically, um, and then you've got COVID, and then you know, there's a lot of question marks with all of our businesses. Do you think that like was that a huge contributor? You feel like, or was it other? stuff more shop related that or maybe even personal related that really said hey i i, I need help like I'm, i can't do this on my own or or actually it sounds like it's just i need time off i mean it you know i mean it was like i said it was really really the the burnout um we just got really busy throughout that time um um uh, i mean of course you're right a lot did happen in 2020, and I think that uh, we took full advantage of that, whether if it was uh, BMLK uh, uh, or BL BLM shirts uh, that needed to be mm -hmm. done by various groups, uh, you know, uh, whether if it was love Trump or hate Trump, we did a lot of that as well. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we like I said, we took advantage of every area that we could possibly can to stay busy in the shop. But like when, when December 1st, December came, I was just done. I mean, normally I take my, a small vacation in November to uh, uh, a, 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 a expo called Complex Con down in Long Beach every year. And that's where the urban community and hip hop community comes together and for this like three day weekend. And I mean, it's very inspiring. And, and usually every, every year I come back so juiced and re, just rejuvenated. And this year, last year it didn't sure. happen. So I didn't have that, that extra, extra to come back and, you know, really perform well at my job, you know. I hear that, to finish a, up the year. Yeah, you know, so, um, you know, uh, and I hear that they're gonna be doing it in Chicago. Um, 
uh, in the next following year. So that'll definitely get me to get out to go to Chicago because this is something I always like to go out because every streetwear company, I mean, from Crooks and Castles, the hundreds, um, et cetera, et cetera, is there at this show where you can network at. And, um, and we really get involved with the hip hop community. And that's something that, I mean, I, I've been a hip hopper for all my life. Um, I'm still a hip hopper to this very day. You know, um, fashion is something that I crave, whether if I'm a sneakerhead or just a t-shirt guy that just loves different types of graphics. So, you know, sure. um, because of that and because people know me as that guy, as a, a, a real OG, I guess, hip hopper, uh, they gravitate to that. And that is part of my network. So, um, we, like I said, we take full advantage of that, you know. Got it. I, I'm curious. That month off, month and a half off or so, do you feel like that just helped decompress or like, is that what you needed or was there other stuff that you found to create a balance to help, you know, manage the growth and, and everything that's happened with the, at the company? That month, I pretty much literally stayed in bed um, and it just something that I needed, you know. Um, I think mom had said something to my daughters, like, why is he in bed? My daughters came back to mom, was like, hey, dad needed. And so it was, it was, it was, it was peaceful. It was away from the shop, away from the machines, um, just to kind of really, like you said, decompress from it all. Uh, but it also gave, it, it put in my, uh, uh, it helped me, it helped, it helped me think, you know, for the future planning uh, as far as employees, uh, what do I want to do next as far as uh, and not burn myself out for the next year? How I'm going to perform my job and be able to work efficiently and not so much. And um, so, you know, I think one of the things that we uh, uh, we talked to one of the folks that we have a contract with and um and just kind of let her know what we were looking for and how we was going to be able to sell her business as well as selling our business mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, um, because, you know, you can get 12 shirts, 24 shirt orders all the time. But those are the orders that really takes a really a lot out of you when you get so many. You know, I'd rather stick with the larger quantity uh, amount of uh, 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 orders versus the small amount of orders because, you know, those, like I said, those small burn uh, orders will burn you out. Just so many of them, you know, washing screens. I mean, because I did it all from the graphics to wash, preparing the screens, washing the screens, on press, printing, pulling, catching. Yeah, you were doing everything. Everything, you know, so... Uh, you know, and over the course of nine months, I mean, it's or let's say seven months. I mean, that will really take a lot out of you. So, um, well, do you, I was just curious, do you feel like you would have brought those two people on earlier to help you sustain all of those different orders, especially from May to December, sort of knowing what you know now, or do you feel like it was fine? I mean, you talk about, you know, doing it like that for seven years. That, that is a, a long time really with you pushing forward at the helm there to be honest with you i guess i was so gun ho just to get it done um but also to see what i can do as far as growth wise um you know a lot of people say it's, it's just remarkable to see where you were from the garage or where you are now um you know i mean paying off the equipment um, you know, from leasing to owning, uh, that's a lot of hard work. You know, we're in, yeah. Nordic, and we're in Northern California. I mean, one of the most expensive areas in the nation and it's tough. I mean, it's really, really tough, but we was, I was able to manage that with the help of my family, of course, but you know, it was just setting that tone with ourselves, looking straight forward and just grinding it out. You know, you set a 10-year plan, 
and you just grind it out no matter what until they all i guess the term here is until the wheels fall off you know so i guess the wheels <laughs> fell off in december <laughs> to make me rethink now what i need to do in order to reach uh take that step to the next level by bringing in folks uh to help out what what do you do you think there's any future roles coming or you think you're okay now with these two um We'll see. I mean, you know, my daughter has been um, very, very, very in the mix with us. Um, she went ahead and uh, portra- uh, purchased a uh, embroidery machine, a Tajima forehead uh, machine. So she's definitely has taken blue chip to another level. Um, this is something that, you know, seven years ago, I told myself that I was never going to get involved with. I was just going to stick with printing. But then, you know, she just kind of you know, pull a rabbit out of the hat. And, <laughs> Why'd you swear it off then? Um, you know, because I was always interested in just getting the... My goal was at one point, okay, Cal, you know, I want to get a second press. I want to do 2,000 shirts a day. And I wanted to really build this into more of a printing company. And so I just kind of put the uh, uh, embroidery thing to the back burner. and just Or just kind of more like, you know, just never thought I was going to get into it or this company was never going to get into it. But uh, she surprised me and, and, you know, she comes from a long line of uh, seamstress and people uh, who souls in her family, our family. And um, she just kind of took it to the next level. And she bought this little brother machine. And, um, you know, I kind of said to her, I was like, why you buy that thing? You know, that's not going to do what you wanted to do. And she found out that it didn't do what it wanted her to, uh, wanted to, for her to do. And, so um, I kind of told her what to look for, and she found a machine up in Sacramento. It was used, of course, but um, it was for a good price, and, you know, we the made it happen. The forehead? Yeah, say it again. The forehead? The yeah. Tajima? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, um, you know, she's like, Dad, can we go and look at it? And I was like, yeah, let's go and look at it. So we drove up to Sacramento and um, took a look at it. The people who was running it, you know, um, uh, took very good care of it and um, we went ahead and made them the offer and they was like hey yeah I mean we seen you guys online before and you know follow your Instagram we would want you to have this machine rather than anyone else so we took advantage of that and a week later we went to go pick it, uh, our movers went to go pick it up and brought it back down and now she's just I mean she spent about a good three weeks trying to really understand the machine and she just did that you know spending a lot of time in the other room just understanding the machine as much as possible and now she's just ready to rock and roll so uh, I mean like I said I'm proud of her you know I'm proud of the things that that she, is really cool yeah you know that ambition is awesome you know, it's funny because, like, in her sixth grade, when she was in sixth grade, she had said to, um, you know, given her class uh, class speech saying that, you know, when I graduate from college, I want to help my dad. Well, here you are. She's helping her dad. <laughs> <laughs> so w- what do you feel like is your biggest win here then over the past 12 months or maybe something that you've taken away from all of this? Uh, change and transition, growth, slow down, bringing on people. Um, you know what? If you were to share something with somebody that that's further behind shop wise, just as they're kind of growing up, up the ranks there, what, what's something that you'd give them? Um, if you can go into a partnership with someone, someone close, someone that's interested, um, do it. Um, going into it uh, by yourself is definitely a huge grind and not everyone is going to be that dedicated unless they're really, really love what they do. But, um, but finding a partner, um, to help you, uh, build is pretty much the advice that I'll give someone. Um, because that's, that's something that I wish that I had done in the beginning or kind of just would have, you know, talk to a few friends that are very close and trustworthy. Uh, someone that was uh, looking for longevity versus looking for shortcoming. Um, those are the things that uh, I wish I would have done. And that's something I would tell the next uh, someone that's just starting out. Um, whether they're in the garage or if they're in a small space, renting a small space. Uh, because, I mean, 
it's very important that you don't burn yourself out. Um, but it's also important that you stay interested and, um, and, yeah. and, and you have an end game. Um, what are you in, uh, the, uh, this career for what is, what type of building blocks that you want to push out of this? And I think what we did is we made those right investments by, uh, by the build, by buying the building, um, uh, 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 purchasing out the equipment um, and uh, little small things here and there that has helped us, you know, build as a family. But if you can find a family member that's very interested in uh, and to go into partnership, even better. You know, if you have a brother, if you have a sister, go <laughs> make it happen. You know, so definitely. You know, you mentioned you mentioned that uh, paying off the equipment in the building. D- did you were you leasing the building first, and then the opportunity came up to buy it, or was it a you were buying it first and you just paid it off? Um, we were leasing for the first two and a half years, and um, uh-huh. then we had the opportunity, uh, and uh, we uh, bought our space. It's forty five hundred square feet. That is really cool. It was the previous owner just said he wanted to get out, or did you kind of convince him? Uh, she's actually uh-huh. when we actually came when we first leased the bu- uh, buildings, she gave us a I think it was like a twelve month lease, and she did say to us that she wanted to sell at some point. Um, you know, um, we didn't know when, and it was interesting because you know we had all this electric stuff, uh, electricity, uh, 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 electric stuff done, drop down hoses coming down into the press. I mean, we did so much to the building. And then finally, when she came to us, she said, I'm ready to sell. She had four units. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's about eight units in this building. And um, she uh-huh. had four of those units. And um, uh, she said, you're either going to have to move, you're going to have to lease from the next owner, or you're going to have to buy. You know, And we scrambled for a little bit. And, um, but luckily, we were in the position in order to uh, purchase the uh, building and um, and pretty much, you know, go from there. I mean, now it feels good that we're not going anywhere. Um, no one's kicking us out. <laughs> no, <laughs> our, there's no lease anymore, you know. And that feels really good because, you know, once you become a fixture in your community, then the skies are unlimited. Everyone knows you by first name here. Um, and, uh, and that's something that we're very grateful, uh, that we were able to establish that seven years here in our community as our home base. Uh, and, and like I said, here in, uh, I would say about three or four cities over, everyone knows me by first name. And that's something that we built by staying in one place. So, um, we're very sure. grateful of that. Yeah. The building's interesting. We we always have a lot of conversations about it just because there's different factors, right, of, of growth. Are you going to outgrow it? Or, um, you know, one big thing is exactly what you said is you just spend so much outfitting it to be what you need that it's hard to not want to, you know, be investing in something that you own versus something that you may have to move out at some point on. Right, right. You know, and, and another thing was, um, you know, when we, we when we were leasing, it just seemed like our money was just going nowhere. You know, we we're just forking out, you know, this money to someone else. And you know, like I said, we live here in Northern California. Rent's super high. Uh, the economy is super high. Sure. You know, so it just almost seems like it's impossible. You know, to even dig out of that, to even gain, you know, you, you're just three thousand, thirty five hundred dollars just going out the door each month. You know, it's just on leasing. And um, of course, the, you know, things, the uh, uh, it just keeps going up and up and up here in Northern California. And um, if I was to move out and just say, OK, I'm going to lease the building out to someone. I mean, that's fifty five hundred dollars that we can lease it out now. But I mean, sure. It's, difficult here in Northern California for anyone to really get ahead and we was trying to find a source of way or some sort of way to get ahead and luckily that just came up uh, uh, when she had came to us and said hey I'm going to help you guys if you, uh, by offering you this uh, 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 this building at a great price and we just took advantage of it sure well, well you, you also, also put yourself in luck's way too, too. 
you know, by taking the, I mean, you talk about taking the leap too, especially going, you know, automatic and uh, jumping into a building and um, that's a big jump, especially 5,500 a month. That's that's a significant jump, jump right? You know, going from a home based business, business in. Right, right. And, uh, and, and, and it was the great thing about it is, is that it is 4,500 square feet. So if we wanted to expand, which my dream one day is to get a Sportsman EXG 14 color auto, I mean, I'm, that's something that I'm just really looking towards, uh, uh, at towards the future. And um, and uh, uh, it, it, we have a, the ability, the capability to put it, uh, another press into the shop. So, yeah. Heck yeah, that's exciting. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. This is Cal King, Blue Chip Tees out of Hercules, California. I appreciate sharing your story. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Printavo Print Hustlers Podcast. Thank you. Right on.